live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering OpenStack Summit 2017. Brought to you by the OpenStack Foundation, Red Hat, and additional ecosystem support. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman, and if I'm sitting on this side of the table uh, with the long hallway behind me, it means that we're here for the wrap uh, of the second day. Uh, John Troyer's here, day two of three days of theCUBE here at OpenStack Summit. Uh, John, I, I, I feel like you know, you're building energy uh, as the show goes on, uh, kind of like the show itself. Yeah, yeah, getting my, getting my footing here. Uh, again, first, my first summit uh, was a good second day, Stu. I think we, we made it through. I, it was, I, we had some fascinating stuff. Yeah, fascinating stuff. And be, before we jump into s some of the, the analysis here, uh, I do want to say, you know, first and foremost, big thanks to the foundation. Um, foundations themselves uh, tend to get, uh, you know, they get beat up some, uh, they get loved some. Uh, without the OpenStack Foundation, we would not be here. Uh, their support for a number of years, our fifth year here at the show, as well as uh, the ecosystem here, really interesting uh, and diverse and ever-changing ecosystem, uh, and that fits into our sponsors too. So Red Hat's our you know, headline sponsor here. Uh, we had Red Hat Summit last week, and you know, two weeks, lots of Red Hatters, uh, and now lots of stackers here. Uh, additional support uh, brought to us by Cisco, uh, by Netronome uh, and by Canonical. Uh, by the way, you know, no secret, we try to be transparent as to how we make our money. If it's a sponsored segment, it lists sponsored by that guest here, and otherwise it is editorial. Uh, day three actually has a lot of editorial, it means we have a lot of end users on the program. We do have vendors, you know, cool startups, interesting people, uh, people like Brian Stevens from Google. When I can get access to them, i love to have it here. So, you know, big shout out, as always, content, we put it out there to the community, uh, try to have it. But back to the wrap, um, John, you know, we, we've, we, we've kind of looked at some of the, the pieces here, the maturity, uh, you know, where it fits in the hybrid and multi-cloud world. What jumped out at you as, as you've been chewing on day two? Well, uh, the thing, my favorite thing from today, and we talked about it a couple times, just in passing, it kept coming up, is OpenStack on the edge. Yeah. So the concept of, that the economics works so today that you can have a device, a box, maybe it's in your closet somewhere, maybe it's bolted to a lamppost or something, but in the old days it would have run some sort of proprietary chip, maybe an embedded Linux. You can put a whole OpenStack distribution on there, and when you do that, it becomes controllable, it becomes a, a, a service layer, you can upgrade it, you can, you can launch more services from there, all from a central location. The I, just That kind of blew my mind, so that's my favorite thing from today. I finally got my arms around that, Okay, I think. great, and we, right, we saw Beth Cohen from Verizon was in the day one keynote we're actually going to have her on, on our program uh, for the third day. And right, teasing out that edge, most of it, uh, telecommunications is a big discussion point here. Um, I understand why. Telcos spend a lot of money, they are at large scale, uh, and that NFV use case has driven a lot of adoption. So, you know, Deutsche Telekom is a headline sponsor of the OpenStack Foundation, did big keynote this morning. at and up on the main stage, Verizon's up on the main stage. Uh, you know, Red Hat and Canonical, I'll talk about their customers that are using it. Um, you know, we just talked to Netronome about, you know, telecommunications. You know, all everybody here, if, if you're doing OpenStack, you probably have a telco place, because that's where the early money is. Um, and it tends to be, there's the network edge, then there's the IOT edge, uh, and you know, some of the devices there, so it was one of the buzzy things going in, and uh, definitely is one of the big takeaways from the show so far. Well, Stu, I also think it's a major proof point for OpenStack, right? Uh, bandwidth needs are not going down. That's pretty clear, with all the things you mentioned, right? Uh, uh, throughput is going to have to go up, services are going to have to be more powerful, uh, and so, and all these different kind of uh, connected devices and qualities of service and video, streaming video to your car. So, if OpenStack, if they can build a backplane, a data plane for OpenStack that can do that, which it looks like they are doing, right? That's a huge proof point uh, downstream from the needs of a telco. So I think that's super important for OpenStack that it's usable enough and robust enough to do that. And that's one of the reasons I think it gets talked about so much. The nice thing is this year, compared to my comparisons of, of previous years of OpenStack Summit, um, Telco is not the only game in town, right? Enterprise also got a lot of play, and there's a lot of use cases there, too. Yeah, and just to close out on that edge piece, I uh, really enjoyed the conversation we had with John and Kendall, uh, who had done the, they worked on the container space, so talking about the maturation of where Cinder had gone, how we went from virtualized environments to containerized environments, uh, and even we teased out a little bit that edge use case. I can have a really small 
OpenStack deployment, uh, to put it at that edge. Uh, maybe that's where some of the serverless stuff fits in. Uh, I, I know I've been, uh, I tell my team every time I get a good quote on serverless, let's make a gem out of that, put it out there, because it's early days, but that is one of those deployments where I need, at the edge environments, I need something lightweight, uh, I, I need something that's you know going to be less expensive, uh, can do some fast processing, and both containers and potentially serverless can be interesting there. Yeah, I mean, even in our canonical discussion with the product manager for the, their OpenStack distribution, right? Containers are all over that, right? Containers are just a way of packaging. They, there are some really interesting development pipelines that are, are now uh, very popular and being talked about and built on in the container space. But containerization actually can come into play multiple points in the stack. Uh, like you said, the canonical distribution gets containerized and pushed out. It's a great way of, of compartmentalizing and upgrading. That's what the demo on stage today was about. Also, just with a couple of uh, very short scripts, containerizing and pulling down components. So I think, um, again, the, my second favorite thing after, after the edge today was just showing that that actually containers and OpenStack mix pretty well. They're, they're really not two separate things. Right, and, and I think containerization is one of those things that enables that multi-cloud world. We talked in another number of segments today, everything from you know, Kubernetes with Brian Stevens as to how that enables that. Uh, reminds me, at Red Hat Summit last week, we talked a lot about OpenShift. OpenShift's that layer on top of OpenStack and sits at that application uh, level uh, layer to allow me to be able to you know, span between public or, or private clouds and we need that kind of, you know, that to be able to enable some, some real multi or hybrid cloud environments. Yeah, I mean containers and in fact that Kubernetes layer may end up being the, the thing that drives more OpenStack adoption. Yeah, and the other thing that's been interesting, you know, just hallway conversations, bumping into people we know, uh, you know, trying to walk around the show a little bit as to people that are finally getting their arms around, okay, OpenStack from a technology standpoint has matured, and you know, they either needed to, you know, clean up what was their internal cloud or you know, building something out. So, you know, real deployments, uh, you know. You know, we talked about it yesterday in the, in, in the close, though. They're real customers doing real deployments, uh, and uh, it's heartening to, to hear. Yeah, I mean, one of those conversations, I, I ran into somebody at a hyperscale company, a friend of mine, and you know, they are building out internal OpenStack clouds to use uh, for real stuff, right? So wait, wait they, hyperscale. Come on, John. We can give away. Uh, you know, <laughs> is this something we have on our phone or something we you know all, the, all, all buy and use? You know, one uh, of those big folks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well interest. There was you know a, a large Chinese company that you know anybody in tech knows that uh, is supposed to be doing a lot uh, you know with, uh, with with OpenStack we heard uh, it definitely Asia you know very broad use uh, of, of OpenStack uh, been a theme of the whole show right is that um, outside the US where we tend to talk a lot about the public cloud um, you know OpenStacks being used I mean an undertone I've heard is right certain Companies that start here in the United States, uh, it's sometimes challenging for foreign companies to say, I'm going to buy and use that. Absolutely, that is a headwind against a company like Amazon. Uh, ties back to, we had a keynote this morning with Edward Snowden and uh, some of those things. What is the relationship between you know, government and global companies that have a headquartered in the US uh, and beyond? Yeah, I think it's too soon to say where the pendulum is, how far the pendulum is going to swing. I'll be very interested in the commentary for next year to see, uh, you know, have we moved away from uh, more of the centralized services dominating uh, the entire marketplace and workload into more distributed, more private, more customizable, uh, for, for all those reasons. All, there's, a, there's a lot of dynamics that might be pushing the pendulum in that direction. Yeah, and, and one of the things I, I, I've liked hearing is, you know, infrastructure needs to be more agile, it needs to be more distributed, more modularized, especially as the applications are changing. So I feel like more than previous summits I've been at, we're at least talking about how those things fit together with everything that's happening with the OpenStack days, uh, you know, the Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, uh, Ceph, you know, uh, other open source projects, mm -hmm. how those all fit together. It feels like a more robust, full position as opposed to, you know, we were just kind of building, you know, a software version of, you know, what we were doing in the data center before. My, yeah, my impression was the conversation was, 
at times had been a little more internally focused, right? It's a world unto its own. Here at this summit, they're definitely acknowledging there's an ecosystem, there's a landscape, it all has to interoperate. Usability is a part of that, and then interoperability and, and componentization is a part of that as well. Yeah, well, the, the changing world of applications, we understand the whole reason we have infrastructure is to run those applications, so if we're not getting ready for that, you know, what are we doing? Yeah, <laughs> if, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I, I, I think the OpenStack community as a whole, uh, one of their goals is, you know, OpenStack needs to be as easy to run as a public cloud, or, or you know, the infrastructure needs to be boring. We heard the word boring a lot, actually, today. Yeah, and what we say is, first of all, the public cloud is the bar that you were measured against. Um, whether it is easier or cheaper, you know, your mileage may vary because, sure. um, you know, public cloud was supposed to be simple. Um, they're adding like a thousand new features every year and it seems to get more complicated over time. Um, it, it, it's wonderful if we could architect everything and make it simple. Uh, unfortunately, you know, that, that's why we have technology. I know every time I go home and have some interaction with a financial institution or a healthcare institution, boy, you, you wish we could make everything simpler, <laughs> um, but um, the world's a complicated complicated place, and that's why we need really smart people like we've gotten to interview here at the show. So, uh, any final comments, John? Uh, no, I think I, that, that sums it up. Those are my favorite things for today. I'm looking forward to talking to a lot of customers tomorrow. Yeah, uh, I'm really excited about that. John, appreciate your help here. Uh, so there's the big party uh, here at the show. Uh, they're, they're taking everyone to Fenway Park uh, for the, the, the Stacker Party. Last year, it was an epic party in Austin. Uh, Boston's fun, Fenway's a great venue. Uh, Looks like the rain's going to hold off, which is good, but it'll be a little chillier than normal. But uh, we will be back here with a third day of programming, as John and I have talked about. Got a lot of users on the program, so uh, really great lineup. Two days in the bag. Check out all the videos. Go to siliconangle.tv to uh, check it all out. Uh, big shout out to the, the, the rest of the team that's at the Dell EMC World and ServiceNow shows. Be able to check those out and all our upcoming shows. And thank you, everyone, for watching theCUBE.